All right, everyone, so I've got my virtual device running right here, so I can see my work. And I've also got my real device, so you need either or, real or virtual. I've got them both here. So what we did last time, uh, we started to work on this migration of our work from last month, now to start using it this month. So to remind you, we'll, go, we'll open the computer window and go back to the network folder, back to our Campos Android 2 folder, and we were working with instruction number 7, and we'll get to number 8 also. But you want to copy 7 and 8. If you don't have them from Tuesday, you want to copy 7 and 8 to your desktop or flash drive. And we will look at 7 again. We started the very, we did like a couple of lines from number 7 and then we stopped, which was, in, in general, we wanted to take our project from last month into a brand new Cordova um, template file. Remember, we created Cordova... Uh, Cordova create basic, or uh, actually we call it template, didn't we? Cordova create template. And that basic template file was our starting point for future projects. We took some time on Tuesday to set up that template file. And then so what we did at the end of the day last time was we copied all of the folders and images and everything that made up our project from last month into our current project. And I've got my flash drive plugged in, and you should have yours as well, um, because we're going to continue to work with your, with your work on your flash drive. I'm going to be able to give you a version of mine, but still you're going to, wa going to want to work on your project on your own flash drive. So if I look on my flash drive, Here's my Kingston 8 F drive. On my F drive, I've got my apps folder. We created this folder together, remember, make directory. We created the apps directory, and any of our apps will live there. We created, we did Cordova create template, and we created a template project. We then we took some effort to, to set some basic foundational um, settings on the template in the config XML file. And the point of that was to have this template file that had our plugins, um, our, our, our main uh, developer information and such, which reminds me, I might not have put that template into the network folder. Let me do that right now. If you don't have a template file, a template folder, what you need to do is, uh, let me go to the network folder, template. So wait, that, wait for that to copy over. What I'm also going to do is put a copy of my work from last time into the network folder. Sorry, I should have done that uh, before class. But, you know, time flies when you're having fun coding. Let's just wait a couple seconds for that to copy over. The point of this, you might not need this. If you have your own MySDCE folder in your flash drive, don't copy this. You're ready to go. If you didn't set yourself up properly last time or just want to start where, where, where I ended up with, wait for this to copy over. and You want to copy MySDCE 2015 to your flash drive. So um, they're almost there. Uh, so you definitely want the MySDCE one. That's where we ended up last time. You could also get a copy of that template file because that would be a very good template to reuse on subsequent projects. So one is done. I can't tell which one. Probably template. Just wait a little bit longer. 
and then you'll be able to get the My SDCU project. Remember, this is the unofficial San Diego Continuing Education project that we worked on last month. Uh, then we're going to make it an app. Okay, so uh, both files have been copied to my network folder. If you don't have an S an, a My SDCE project folder, copy that to your flash drive. You want the one that's got the, 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 the 13. Obviously, the, the 06 is the plain HTML. You don't want that one. You want the one with the 13th. And so I've copied it to my desk, uh, to my flash drive right here. I need to uh, open the command prompt and go to this folder. So uh, I don't believe I've told the whole class, I've told individuals here and there, but we can quickly open a command prompt at a specific folder, actually. Instead of going to Start Menu and opening up the Node command prompt and then doing CD and blah, 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 we can, we can quickly open a command prompt this way. If you hold Shift on the keyboard and then right-click on your My SDCE folder, obviously make sure you're right-clicking on the one on your flash drive, not my network folder. You want to shift, right-click, my SDCE, and notice at the top of the menu you have open command window here. It's a quick way to open a command prompt. That's what we want. There we go. I'm in my F drive, apps, my SDCE, with last time's date. Is everyone on the proper folder? Okay, so just to orient ourselves, let's type Cordova platform. This is only to check what platforms do we have installed again. Two days is a long time, so I just want to remember where did we end up with. That's right, we've got Android platform and the browser platform. So we could do Cordova run Android or Cordova run browser, and it will open our project in either the browser or the Android device. I've got a, um, I've got a, I've got a, a real device plugged in, so I'm going to try Cordova run Android. If you don't have a real device, how do you run it on a virtual device? Cordova emulate Android. So either or. Run Android if you've got a real device. Emulate Android if you've got a virtual device. Cordova emulate Android. So do that briefly. Um, sometimes issues appear at this point, so if you have an issue, raise your hand. Sometimes some issues that might appear are that the you've got an you've got an old version of the app and then it gets confused. So that's right. You've got any issues, call me. Shift, right click my SDCP. Thank you. 
Let me change this and show you the F version of my class. Okay, you got the F version of the Perfect. So now you have a view of the things. Let me get some part of that emulate.
Okay, so um, we were just taking a quick look at what the uh, what the app looked like. We still have more to do as per these instructions. So let's continue. Uh, basically, we have the old index file, index two, and the new index file. So that means inside of your my SDCE project, go ahead and open that folder there inside of the Windows Explorer, and you should see inside the WW folder. Remember our whole project is a website and it exists in the WW file. So go ahead and open up the WW folder. And we've got index 2 which is what the original basic template file of Cordova was and we've got index which was what our project from last month was. I want to open both index 2 and index because I want to copy some lines of code that are in index 2 over to my current index project. So you can actually uh, click index and then shift click index 2 and then right click any one of them and you'll get to edit both of them in notepad at once. So you can select more than one editable file and then right click and you'll be able to edit them both in notepad. Let's go ahead and open both index and index2 in Notepad. So index2 has some code that I want to put into index. Um, I want to see these side by side, so remember you can right click the tab of a particular um, file, right click one of them, and select at the bottom, move to other view. Now we see them side by side. So what we see on index 2, which is the basic template file, is it's got the doc type, of course. And then it's got a huge chunk at the top that is a comment that is the Apache software license. So it's just basically telling you this is software, you're using it as is, there's no warranties, and all of that. So okay, that's fine, that's nice. Then after that comes the HTML and then head. And so what we need to do is we need to copy um, basically 
do you see we've got uh, okay we've got the the meta car set on index um, which for some reason we don't have that on the basic app and then we've got viewport but this viewport here is a little bit different better actually and then we've got Apple mobile device and such so we've got some different things the one inside index 2 are, are the basic meta tags for our app the first one is meta HTTP equivalent content security policy. This is something pretty new actually. I've been teaching this for several years and this came out very recently because there's been so many sorts of hacks and things with different uh, websites and apps and so forth that this new content security policy is a way to help protect that your app is not hijacked um, from, uh, from, from hackers. So we're going to need to copy that over in a moment. We've got something called Meta Format Detection Telephone No. This is just to make sure that we don't use the older telephone standard of apps, even though it's going on a telephone, but it's not only going on a telephone, it can go on a tablet. So there is going to be a standard, basically, for mobile apps that had that meta tag. And basically we're saying here is ignore that format. It didn't work out. The format that we're going to use is basically uh, a responsive web design approach. We've got another meta tag that says MS application tab highlight. No. Um, it's, it's a web page that we're putting into our project, but we've got these various things that we can do so that it doesn't behave like a web page. And one of them is that when you're on a website, on your web browser, and you tap and hold, you can select a word to copy it and paste it. That's the normal website behavior. But you don't really see that in an app. If you're in Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, you don't really select text to copy it. It's, it's, it's not really selectable. So it's got here, highlight? No. Don't let a person tap to hold to highlight regular text. We've got a viewport, which is very similar to what we've dealt with before. This viewport here. This is a little bit different, and it's a little better. User scalable, no. So that means a person cannot zoom in and out, like a real app. Initial scale, 1 or 100%, so again it's zoomed in perfectly um, on the device, whatever the size. Maximum scale, minimum scale, that's a little different I believe. The maximum that you can zoom in is 100%. The minimum you can zoom out is 100%, so again it locks you into a certain zoom, just to be even more safe in case this first one didn't work. Then we've got width, device width. Stretch out the width of our app to fill the device the devices with the viewport, the visible area. So we're going to need that line of code. This CSS index file, we're not going to need that one because that one is pointing to a CSS file that um, that has features for our old basic template file, which we don't need. We have our own CSS file, so we don't need that title says hello world but it doesn't matter because the app will never show this on screen ours is empty it simply says title we've got head and body etc etc scrolling down then we've got two lines here let me look at line 47 first js slash index js this is a an index file that is uh, a javascript file that is specifically for this index file which we don't need because we've got our own. We've got that codica.js file. We've got that file where we're writing our own custom JavaScript. But then we've got a very important JavaScript library right here, cordova.js. That basically is the magic that makes our JavaScript commands and translates them into the appropriate Android code or iPhone code or Windows code or Linux code that line right there takes uh, takes our JavaScript and translates it. So that's a very important line. My instructions here try to explain as, as clearly as possible, hopefully, that we're going to be copying these lines that I just mentioned from the old index file to our new index file. So we'll start with... I, I actually also want to copy this big comment right here because it's uh, it's pretty useful it doesn't make sense just yet, but it will in a moment. So I want to copy, I think I want to select line 22 
all the way down to 34. Make sure you get to the end of line 34. 22. Twenty-two to thirty-four. Don't don't miss any part. Of course, don't miss an angle bracket. Select the whole thing, right-click and copy. Over on our on our real index file, let's paste it right after the meta car set. Remember, the car set is allowing us to use basically all the languages of the world. So on line five, on line five, paste what you just copied into this line here. So I brought the comment, don't forget the opening comment tag, and, the, and this content security policy, and the format detection, and the MS app, and the viewport. Wait a minute, we've got two viewports now. So obviously, we delete the old, the old incomplete viewport, line 18. We've got this new viewport and the old one, delete the old viewport line, line 18. We don't. We also don't need meta name Apple mobile web app. We don't need those because really those are only for websites. This is eventually, obviously, going to be an an Android or iPhone or Windows Phone app, and that line of code is not relevant, even if it was an iPhone app. So lines 19 and 20, these two meta Apple tags, delete those as well. I'm just going to clean up my empty lines a little bit here. Just delete those empty lines. And I've got title, just to orient yourself. Meta viewport is on 17, and title is on 18. So did everyone copy that over? <clears throat> okay, so... From the from the old index, index 2. We're going to need that line of Cordova. So down at the bottom, line 46. Select line 46, which is our script, Cordova, JS. Copy that line. And on our new index file, we need to paste it after jQuery mobile. So on index, that's going to be all the way at the bottom. So on our new index file, we've got line 265, which is jQuery, 266, which is jQuery mobile, 268, which is Kodika. So we're going to need a, a new line right after 266. So we're going to have the jQuery library load, and then the jQuery mobile library, and then paste. Then we're going to have the Cordova library load. The Cordova library, again, is what makes our JavaScript get uh, converted into the appropriate native languages, basically. Why is it at the bottom as opposed to under the meta tag? It could be in either place, but it's often good practice to put it at the very bottom because sometimes when we use JavaScript, it can try to access HTML content that doesn't exist yet. So if you have it at the very top and it's saying go to this div, but it doesn't exist yet, so we'll put it at the end. And if you have an eagle eye, you'll see that this script tag looks slightly different than the two previous ones. Anyone notice anything different? I see script, I see source, and what else? Right, type. That is completely optional to have that. Um, modern HTML5 assumes that any script tags is JavaScript, even though we have JavaScript, CGI, ASP, we have different scripts. But modern HTML5, which is what our project is, assumes that we've got JavaScript. This is totally optional. We can remove it or we can keep it, whatever you'd like. But because I want to be consistent, I'm going to remove it. And that's equivalent. This still means this is JavaScript, even though we don't explicitly say. Did you see that it said type equals text JavaScript? 
we've got a modern app running on a modern device. We would need that line of code if we were running it like on Internet Explorer 7, let's say, or 6, which won't exist on a mobile device or on desktop devices eventually. Let's save that. So I've copied the important parts from my old index file, index2. Go ahead and close your index2 tab so that we only have the modern index file, our current project. Technically no, because we're doing this on the MySDCE project. We could have done this also on the template project, okay. but we're doing it on the MySDCE project. Okay. Let's back up all the way to the top again, uh, line 5, and let's read what this comment says. Uh, customize this policy to fit your own app's needs. For more guidance, read this. And it goes to github.com slash Apache Cordova. Okay, good. Some notes. GAP is required only in iOS. Okay, HTTPS SSLG static is required only on Android. Okay, disables use of inline script in order to mitigate the risk of cross script. What does that stand for again? Cross scripting service or something? To minimize the, the risk of vulnerabilities. To change this, do this. What this is saying, you know, ignore these two basically. We, we want that. But this next one is saying is, we have deactivated all inline JavaScript because theoretically someone could hijack your app with some well-placed JavaScript. So what this is saying is, that inline JavaScript has been deactivated, and we have that. For example, at the very end of our project, we have load name. That's some JavaScript that has been added to our project to make it work. So now suddenly, if we were to run our project, many things wouldn't work because JavaScript is deactivated. You might think, that's very draconian. My whole app relies on JavaScript. It is very harsh, but we can fix it. So by default, this is a very strict content security policy. We need to activate the ability to use unsafe inline, quote-unquote, unsafe inline JavaScript. What that means is here, line 14, we have this content security policy. And we have, the way we read this is, we've got a chunk We've got chunks separated with semicolons. This is one chunk here. Default source, blah, 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 semicolon. Then we've got next to that, style source, blah, 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 semicolon. Then we've got media source, the end. No semicolon after the third item here. This security policy is basically saying what can this app use and what can it not use. Um, so I don't see anywhere here that says allow us to use JavaScript. So therefore JavaScript doesn't work in our project, but our app relies on JavaScript. So default source, we've got self, everything within the project itself can be used except JavaScript. Something about GAP, which this comment says here, it's for iOS, so we leave it. Something about SSLG static, which is about Android, so we'll leave it. Then we've got unsafe eval. Don't worry about what that means just yet. But this is saying, in order to bring back your regular old JavaScript, you need to add, quote, unsafe-inline, quote, to the default source. Here's default source. So anywhere that we've got it within this chunk, let's put it at the end here. We've got unsafe eval, quote unquote, unsafe eval, semicolon. Right after that quote, before the semicolon, space, single quote, single quote. Very important that those are single quotes. So I'll explain why in a moment. Single quotes, 
It's telling us we need to type there unsafe dash inline. Unsafe dash inline. The single quotes are important because, backing up here, content equals quote, double quote, blah, 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 double quote. So if we had used a double quote there, we would break this whole line. We've looked at this before. We've seen that when we've got double quotes around things, and we need to put quotes inside of it, we'd use single quotes. That's why those are single quotes. So here we've said default source allow us to use unsafe inline JavaScript. I'm going to save that. We're going to see our project in the, in the device one more time in a moment, and then we'll take a break. Before we go further, what I want to do here is, this is a very important thing, and this is going to cause a lot of uh, this is going to cause a lot of uh, um, oh, a lot of um, frustration for various reasons. Uh, so, what we're going to do is take a look at this website, and then we'll take a break. Go ahead and load your web browser. going to go to this website, content-security-policy.com. That's the exact meta tag, isn't it? That's what line uh, six or eight or whatever is, is, is called. So there's a website that explains all of this. The reason this is frustrating is because if we have that meta tag, it's going to make our app very restrictive, very restrictive for safety. And that's always a concern with modern uh, technology, weighing safety and convenience. We could remove completely this whole line, line 14, we could move it, remove it completely and our app will um, will function um, will function how we expect it to. But then it's not secure because there could be a cross-server scripting attack. Someone could hijack your app. Um, so if we do use this line of code, then we have to learn, well, how does it actually work? And this website is all about that. The new content security policy response header helps you reduce cross-site scripting attacks on modern browsers by, de by declaring what dynamic resources are allowed to load via HTTP. Um, so we just saw this right here, default source. What does it mean? It explains it here. What can we put into it? We've got this one here, script source, defines valid sources of JavaScript. We can further say CSS and images and other things, frames. It's technical. But all of the information is here, and I've got it in the network folder also, a link back to this, to this site. So what I want to do to make sure this all works, I want to see this on my device or my virtual device, and then we'll take a break because we should have our project working. So I'm going to now, now I'm going to go back to the command prompt, Cordova. Um, we use Notepad to edit the code, and then we use Cordova to see the result. So actually, just to keep on track here, Cordova build. We're going to compile our code. We're going to take our code that we just edited and build the latest version of the project. Cordova build. And after you've built it, then you can either do Cordova emulate Android, Cordova run Android, or whatever it is you need to do to see the result. So let's take a break at this point, make sure everything's working, and then we'll come back. It's 7.22, we'll be back at 7.32. Questions?